Hello! I thought I would go ahead and just do a brief, I haven't really done a full-on makeup video or a spoken makeup video in a while, so I thought that based on a couple of requests that I had received or a couple questions I was asked, I would go ahead and show you um, my very favorite makeup brushes, the ones that I use every single day. Um, and I actually have probably, for the most part, several versions of each of these brushes, but these are the ones that I prefer over any that I've tried, and so these are the ones I'm sticking with right now. Um, when, you, when you try a foundation brush, a lot of times it may seem like they're all created equal. For instance, one of the, you know, the paintbrush style foundation brushes. Um, but there's a lot of things that make each make one preferable to another. So I thought I would let you know, and I haven't cleaned these, so I apologize. But um, I thought I would just let you know what about specific makeup brushes, um, these ones that I'm going to show you, I prefer and why I prefer them. And then um, kind of give you some ideas where you can find something similar. So the first one I use every single day, I'm going to go in order of how I use them. I tend to put on my primer and my um, SPF and things like that with my fingers, so that's not an issue at all as far as needing a brush. However, I do apply my foundation with a foundation brush. Now, I have about six foundation brushes. This is a foundation brush, just a typical standard paintbrush style is what I call it. And this is the kind that you brush, you know, downward strokes to apply your foundation. Now the thing that makes me love this particular one over any of the others I have, for instance this one's by Sigma, um, and I like it. This is by Pirouette, and this is a vegan line. They do not have any natural animal hairs in any of their brushes. There is something about the stiffness and the softness of this one because whenever you're applying your foundation, I don't blend with this, I just actually apply it with this. I will literally take some, put it on the back of my hand, and then just apply it into specific areas. And one of the things I do not like is for the foundation to absorb into the brush, and I also don't like for the brush to be too stiff and too coarse. So this is a perfect example of a great foundation brush. It's soft, it has a tapered edge, so you can get up around the eyes if you need to around the corners of the nose, my very favorite place to go and apply foundation or concealer. Um, but it's also very, very soft, and so there's no issues at all with that. To clean this brush, I typically use a combination of, um, because it, do, it is used for cream applying, I tend to use a combination of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and Dawn dishwashing liquid. Dawn specific, brand specific dishwashing liquid. I've tried Ajax because it was cheaper, and it made my brush oily. So this is a really, really good brush and I use a combination of um, olive oil and dish liquid to clean it so that it's nice and clean but also still conditioned. So this is my favorite brush for it. And I've actually had this one a while. This is the 05 from Pirouette. Um, and it's not, it's, I mean, bristles aren't coming out. It's in excellent condition and the writing is actually wearing off because I've used it so much but I've never had any issues with it. My favorite foundation brush, um, I used to have the Flat Top Kabuki from Sigma, and I loved that brush. However, it started to shed a little bit at a time, and then the bristles came out in one big chunk. Um, this was after washing it a few times, and I am not overly, um, I, don't, I don't allow my brushes to stay in the water, and I do not allow them to, like, I don't put them upright after I wash them so that the ferrule does not become, um, so that the glue is not compromised, but for some reason I had two of those brushes and both times the bristles just fell out in one big chunk. It's an excellent brush. I think it's called the F80. Um, it's been used around here on YouTube for ages and I love that brush. However, it is a huge issue to me that it fell apart like that after washing it. And I had it replaced once by the company and then the second time I just decided to try something else. This is a brush that I discovered at work it was a very pricey brush. I think it was a $45 brush. That's pricey for me. And this is by Studio Gear. It's the number three domed foundation brush. I think I have discussed this with you in a favorites video, but let me tell you again why this is so great. Um, it's a natural bristle brush, I believe. I don't believe these are artificial or synthetic hairs. Um, it's extremely soft on the top but it's domed and it's very dense. 
The reason that this works so well for foundation to blend it is that it gives you that airbrushed look without too much, because it's so dense, the, the foundation doesn't go way down in there and absorb too much. It kind of stays right on top, and then when you blend your foundation, it literally gives it like an airbrushed, flawless finish. It is by far the best method of applying and blending liquid foundation I've ever seen. I love it so much. You can use it also to apply cream foundation, and the cream will stay right on the top. Um, because it is so soft, it never ever feels overly scratchy or harsh on the skin, and it's an amazing brush. So. I know that this line was charged back at Dillard's, so I do not know where you can get it now, possibly Sephora, but if not, just check it out online um, or find something very similar. This is the domed foundation brush, and it is specifically for liquid or cream foundations. Uh, the next brush that I tend to use, now I don't use a, a brush for concealer at all. I use my finger for concealer. I apply one of the airbrush tip style concealers, and then I just blend it with my finger. So I never ever have to use a brush for concealer. Uh, but the next th brush that I use is an angled eyeliner or yeah, angled eyeliner brush, but is typically what it's called, but I use it for eyebrows. And I use it to fill in my brows after using a pencil. I'll use a pencil just to kind of sketch my brows in and then I will use a brush like this one and I think I may have shown you this one in a video before as well. This is by Miss Makeup, which is a brand from Walmart. I do not know if it is carried elsewhere, um, but the length of this brush as well as the stiffness of the bristles and the width of the angled portion of the brush is perfect, ideal for eyebrows. This holds exactly the right amount of product and it makes a nice crisp clean line and so it's perfect. I actually prefer this one to the Anastasia um, eyebrow brush which is probably the best one you can find on the market. It's very razor thin and it's really stiff and still soft. Um, however, this one was like super cheap at the drugstore and it's lasted me for years. So it's really, really hard for me to qualify making that switch. So I use that one at work, but this is the one I use at home. It's Miss Make and it's short. I like that it's short. Uh, next I move on to blush or actually powder probably. This is my Clarins powder brush. The thing I love about it is that it is domed and it's a bit narrow, um, but I actually really love the softness of this brush and I love the fact that it's domed in this way. So I use it just to apply loose powder after I finish my foundation. And this is my favorite powder brush of the millions of powder brushes that I have. I have a lot of powder brushes and they tend to be quite expensive. So it's nice to have one that you like, um, but this one is just not as dense, it's still, the, the, the bristles are a little bit more sparse than the other powder brushes I have, for instance, from Sigma or from Pirouette. And I really, really like the, the feel of this one. The next one that I use regularly is an angled blush brush. I'm using this one because I think it's goat hair. This is by Sigma, it's the SS168 and I've had it for years. I have gotten several blush brushes since this one, but this is the one I keep coming back to because I like the density of the bristles, the softness of it, and the fact that it's angled. It can be used for contour, and this is the only type of blush brush I tend to use is an angled blush brush. I like to apply my blush from the outside in, so this is just the one that makes the most sense for me. And like I said, this is purely a matter of taste. I don't think this is the best brush ever. It's just the one that tends to be working the best for me. And then I move on to my eyeshadow brushes. Um, I have four that I use every day. There are others, there's angled ones, there's ones that you can use for specific looks, but for sort of an everyday look like what I have on right now, I tend to stick with four. The first one being a nice flat eyeshadow brush. This is just a basic eyeshadow brush. It's pretty sizable. It's not very small, so it covers quite a bit of area. I use it for my brow bone, for my lid, and it's soft, but it's also, like I said, pretty stiff. And it's not one that I uh, have. I feel comfortable re comfortable replacing. I have a lot of basic eyeshadow brushes, and this is the one that I always come back to. It's by Lalique, which is also a drugstore brand, and it's called the 4007 Smudge Brush. I don't use it for smudging, though. It's just stiff enough to apply and pack on color, but it's also soft enough to not apply it too harshly. So this is my favorite, just basic eyeshadow brush. I also love this one from Real Techniques. I use this one to apply color in the crease and it is called just, I think it's just called the base eyeshadow brush or the base shadow brush, but I don't feel like this is the best that I 
I don't feel like this is the best for me as far as a basic eyeshadow brush. I feel like this is very, very soft. It's domed, so I feel like it works best in the crease. But I love the fact that it is soft and that it is fluffy because that makes it apply color in sort of a diffused way, which is what I tend to do every day. So this one, the base eyeshadow brush from Real Techniques is the one that I use for my crease color. And then if I just want to uh, darken up this area on the outer edge, I use this crease brush by Pirouette. This is the number 13. I love that it's small but still fluffy and it applies color really, really easily just in this section here because it's small enough to get into that area, but it's soft enough to not apply the color too harshly. So I love this one, use it every day. And I also use it sometimes to blend color, like if my eyeliner's a little harsh, I'll use it to blend color under my eye as well. And last but not least, my favorite blending brush is this one from Sigma. This is the SS 224. I don't even know if they still have the same numbers. These have lasted me so long, so it's literally been years since I've had to buy a blending brush. I have a lot of them though, and this is my favorite one. Now, technically, this is the same as another one that I received from Sigma, which I don't like as well. It had the same number on it, but the bristles were way more full. And I love the fact that this one is somewhat condensed. It's not a super, super fluffy brush. It's uh, loose enough and sparse enough bristles to really, really move around easily and do a good job at blending. It's not too densely packed, but it's also small enough to not not bring the color too far up towards your brow bone if you're just trying to blend the color right there at the crease. So very pointed, very specific blending brush. And that's all. Hopefully that helped you. If you asked questions about this, hopefully that helped you out um, or answered your questions. And if you have any questions about makeup brushes um, that I didn't feature in this video or want to know why I didn't, why I don't use those brushes regularly, I'll be glad to answer that in the comments below. That's all. Have a good day.